Question number 36 of the Summa Theologia is continuing in the treatise of the Most Holy Trinity, and this is of the person of the Holy Ghost, okay, the, or the Holy Spirit. I think those two could be used pretty interchangeably. I want to point out that in the second article of this question, St. Thomas Aquinas is going to defend the Roman Catholic Western Church's view that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. In fact, from the Father through the Son. And this, if you are a student of history, you probably know that this was one of the key theological issues that caused the first rupture within the Christian church back in the 11th century. I think it was 1054 when the East and the West split and they, they remain split to this day. But it was the issue about the filioque, okay, which means, you know, from through through the sun. And does the Holy Spirit proceed from the Father and the Son as the Roman church believed or does the Holy Spirit proceed only through the from the father as the orthodox church believed and it wasn't the only issue but it was a big issue okay there were other things that were at stake at the time but uh, um this is really interesting and i want to go into this in some depth in the depth in this article uh article number two here because uh this is very important from a historical standpoint because St. Thomas Aquinas lived about 200 years after this debate uh, rose up. All right, so article number one, whether this name Holy Ghost is the proper name of one divine person. Now, remember, as I mentioned before, whenever you see the word proper, it means specific. Okay, is this something specific, this name to the third person of the Blessed Trinity? And St. Thomas Aquinas is going to say yes, but it's really interesting how he words this because it's almost like they couldn't think of a name for the, the third person of the, of the Blessed Trinity. So they had to kind of by default, you know, settle for Holy Ghost. Um, so anyways, he says, while there are two processions in God, one of these, the procession of love, has no proper name of its own. Hence, the relations also which follow from this procession are without a name, for which reason the person proceeding in that manner has not a proper name. So they're like, we got no name for this, <laughs> this person uh, proceeding from the Father and the Son, right? So to signify the divine person who proceeds by way of love, this name, Holy Ghost, is by the use of scriptural speech accommodated to him. So he seems to be saying, uh, you know, Scripture just kind of gave him this name and because there was no other name to, to give him. The appropriateness of this name may be shown in two ways. Firstly, from the fact that the person who is called the Holy Ghost has something in common with the other persons. And this is, it's almost comical that he's just going to take the word holy and ghost and say, well, that applies to the other persons as well. For the Father also is a spirit and the Son is a spirit, and the Father is holy, and the Son is holy. Uh, secondly, from the proper signification of the name. Now, this is interesting. For the name spirit in things corporeal seem to signify impulse and motion. For we call the breath and wind by the term spirit. Now, it is properly of love to move and impel the will of the lover towards the object loved further holiness is attributed to whatever is ordered to god so that's where the name holy ghost comes from because like the father and the son the holy spirit is holy and he's a ghost okay and so that but we'll get more specific into the proper name and other names that the Holy Ghost will go by. All right, so here's the big article. This is the Filioque article where St. Thomas Aquinas explains the Western Church's teaching on the Holy Spirit proceeding uh, from the Father and the Son. I think his explanation makes a lot of sense. And so I'm going to go through this kind of slowly because I think this is of great interest. He says, okay, whether the Holy Ghost proceeds from the Son. It must be said that the Holy Ghost is from the Son. For if he were not from him, he could no wise, in no wise, be personally distinguished from him. All right, so he's saying, the, and this whole explanation is going to come down to, there has to be a distinguishing factor between the second and third persons of the Blessed Trinity, or else 
they're like the same thing and therefore they are not distinguished from each other okay that's going to be his big point is that they have to somehow be distinguished from each other all right for it cannot be said that the divine persons are distinguished from each other in any absolute sense for it would follow that there would not be one essence of the three persons remember essentially the three persons are the same okay there's one essence there's one being there's one nature within the blessed trinity but from a personal standpoint they are distinct and this is what thomas is trying to get get to here since everything that is spoken of god in an absolute sense belongs to the unity of the essence therefore it must be said that the divine persons are distinguished from each other only by the relations <laughs> okay, remember when we first started talking about the blessed trinity we talked about processions and then immediately relations okay relations are what's key here now the relations cannot distinguish the persons except for as much as they are opposite relations which appears from the fact that the father has two relations by one of which he is related to the son and by the other to the holy ghost so there has to be a relational relationship between the father and the son and the father and the holy ghost right but these are not opposite relations and therefore they do not make two persons all right so he's saying that the 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 son proceeds from the father and the holy ghost proceeds from the father but there's no distinction there between the father and the son if that's the case right if therefore in the son and the holy ghost there were two relations only whereby each one each of them were related to the father these relations uh, would not be opposite to each other so if they both proceed from the father equally well there's no there's no difference there's no opposition so to speak between the two hence as the person of the father is one it would follow that the person of the son and of the holy ghost would be one okay they'd be the same thing right they wouldn't be distinct having two relations opposed to the two relations of the father uh, but this is heretical <laughs> since it destroys the faith in the trinity because then you'd only have two persons because if two are pretty much equal in every way then you don't have three distinct persons therefore the son and the holy ghost must be related to each other by opposite relations which means that he's saying one of them has to proceed from the other and he's going to go on and say well it could be either way but and then therefore we must conclude that it is necessary to say that either the son is from the holy ghost which no one says <laughs> or that the holy ghost is from the son to which we confess furthermore that the son proceeds by the way of the intellect as word and the holy ghost by way of the will as love now love must proceed from a word for we do not love anything unless we apprehend it by a mental conception that's really interesting as well because remember the father generates the son as word of god and what he's saying is that we can't love what we don't know and so knowledge has to come before love intellect before will in a sense and so i think that makes sense so if from the one person of the father two persons proceed the son and the holy ghost there must be some order between them okay so that's his whole point all right finally hence also the greeks themselves recognize that the procession of the holy ghost has some order to the son for they grant that the holy ghost is the spirit of the son and that he is from the father through the son some of them are said also to concede that he is from the son or that he flows from the son but not that he proceeds so the key seems to be that the eastern church doesn't want to acknowledge that the holy spirit proceeds from the son but they're willing to give some ground right so it seems to be a lot of terminology here which seems to come from from ignorance or obstinacy okay this is thomas getting pretty strong language here he, he's saying ignorance and obstinacy that's what's keeping the, the eastern church from agreeing with the west hence granted that the granted that the holy ghost originates in any way from the son we can conclude that the holy ghost proceeds from the son all right there you have it. I think that's really, really interesting from a historical standpoint. All right, whether the Holy Ghost proceeds from the Father through the Son, he says, because the Son receives from the Father that the Holy Ghost, okay, therefore, because the Son receives from the Father that the Holy Ghost proceeds from him, it can be said that the Father 
spirates the Holy Ghost through the Son, or that the Holy Ghost proceeds from the Father through the Son, which has the same meaning. So yes, the Holy Ghost proceeds from the Father through the Son. In Article 4, whether the Father and the Son are one principle of the Holy Ghost. All right, you might say, no, nah, I don't think there's going to be one principle, but there actually is. And this is the reason. The Father and the Son are in everything one, wherever there is no distinction between them of opposite relation. All right? Hence, since there is no relative opposition between them as the principle of the Holy Ghost, it follows that the Father and the Son are one principle of the Holy Ghost. All right? So I hope you found that interesting, and uh, we're going to go now into a couple more articles about the Holy Ghost. One is going to be as his name of love, and then also his name is gift, and then we're going to close out the final five or six questions on the Most Holy Trinity. And I hope you are enjoying this, and thank you so much. I hope some of you have watched all of these videos. If you're watching this far into this video, why don't you leave a comment and say, you know what, I've watched all of them. And if so, kudos to you. Congratulations. Keep at it because it just keeps getting better and better as you flow through the Summa Theologia, one question at a time. St. Thomas Aquinas, pray for us. Thanks for watching. God bless you.